The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Business Performance USA, our webinar series. This is Victor Dominguez talking, and I'm honored and privileged to have everyone join us today. We have a good audience today because we have an excellent topic. So thanks for joining us, and welcome to Mobile Geddon. What does it mean for my website? Uh, critical topic because we know, of course, everything is shifting over to the mobile environment. Um, and that's where your, your website and really your, your business experience needs to take place, both with B2B and B2C, of course. So today, here I am on the left, but it's really not about me. I'm here to talk about Mary Putnam. So let's jump in and uh, welcome Mary. You'll be hearing from her very, very soon. I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping here, then we're going to uh, introduce Mary. Of course, we want to make sure this event is worth your time. Uh, you're investing your 30 minutes or so, and we want to make sure you get real value out of it. So feel free to ask us questions with the chat feature or, of course, the questions feature. Whatever you're most comfortable with, we monitor both during this webinar. And asking questions is an excellent way for you to get your value out of it. And if you have questions later or you would like to ask a question later, um, you can contact Mary directly, mary at designyoursite.net. And of course, you can always visit businessperformanceusa.org because we, we record these videos and webinars and post them there for you to watch later. And I classically typically go back and, and watch webinars and look at little two-minute segments uh, so I can really extract the value that I need. But let me jump in and introduce Mary. Mary is a partner, colleague, associate, friend, um, and somebody we strongly admire. Mary Putnam is president and founder of Design Your Site, her own firm. Mary Putnam is also an, is, is really at the core an internet executive with more than 20 years of industry experience and insight, developing winning strategies, driving results, and focusing on client satisfaction. That's both for her clients, and you can trust that when she works with you, uh, she'll be focused on your customer satisfaction as well. Now, Mary sees technology as a great enabler, using technology to build a better mousetrap, making your website or web application work the way you want it to work, not the other way around. In other words, let's get your website to work for you. So we know from our experience, Mary is really passionate about helping businesses solve problems using the Internet. Her experience in Internet domain ranges from network engineering and data center management to information architecture and topping off with a strong dose of telecommunications. So welcome, Mary. Let me shift this over to you so that uh, you can present. And there you go, Mary. You should see a uh, window for you to take over and show your screen. How are we doing there? Okay. I think I'm doing good. Let me uh, get this. <clears throat> this is going to show my screen, and then I'm going to start this okay. presentation. I just want to thank you, Victor, for that introduction. Uh, I'm flattered. As you know, I respect uh, everyone at BPUSA highly. So um, thank you well, again for that introduction. You're quite welcome. Um, so, I guess everybody here has heard about MobileGeddon. We wonder, why did they call it MobileGeddon? Well, the past, <clears throat> excuse me, the past history of Google changes have created devastating uh, results for many, many websites. So, we were expecting the same. Um, it hasn't been as devastating as we expected, and I want to talk about that a little bit, but before I do, I really want to help you understand about why this web technology, which I'm very excited about, it is the second most powerful change in web technology that has occurred since I've been doing this uh, kind of work in 1997. So what happened, what really happened was that um, flash technology 
wasn't playing well on cell phones. It never played well on uh, Apple computers. To the great consternation of Steve Jobs, who, as we all know, could be a bit outspoken and was very powerful influence in the industry, he did a blog in 2010 that said, open architecture versus proprietary was necessary to keep the internet alive. And so he broke ties, as it were, with Adobe, who he'd been a longtime friend with because he felt like, or believed, that the technology superseded his own personal interest. So that kind of started the ball rolling on defining a hard and fast mobile responsive, what we call HTML5. Hypertext markup language is the basis of all websites. Um, in 2014, Google's ad revenues started to slip. They saw that, and I have some statistics here, they saw that they lost 10% in 2013 in ad revenues, and again, um, in 2014. So they understood from their research that this was because more and more people were going to uh, mobile mobilization to find websites. The predictions are that this year, 2015, there'll be a tipping point in the use of mobile technology. What that means is, is that more people will be doing their internet searches on mobile devices, which include tablets, iPads, and the like, then they will be doing them on um, what a traditional device would be, your laptop or your desktop computer. So Google didn't have any choice but to implement these algorithms because they're going to use that in their strategy to keep their ad revenues up. So in April this year, I think it was the 23rd or something like that, shortly after tax day, uh, Google implemented this mobile getting and we all waited with anticipation. <clears throat> now the result of that has been, I should go back, the result of that hasn't been staggering. We have clients that chose have chosen not to mobilize, so we've sort of used them as a canary in the mine to see how drastically the shift has been, and it's been very subtle. We're thankful to Google for that. They have the power to do that subtly and not um, it would be inappropriate for them, and in my opinion, to weight that one aspect of a company's business so heavily that it gave them a competitive edge over all their competitors. They have weighted it, and you will see the shift occur gradually. So let's talk a little bit about um, what's been going on in this world of mobilization. And the only real hard, fast research we have is the Fortune 500 companies. So only 30% of them have adopted HTML5. And you can see from this chart, uh, the interesting thing is that 32% um, are still using what we call HTML1 transitional, which is the original. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a little tick in my throat. <laughs> Um, the data gets a little bit more interesting, and we'll get into that in a minute, but I want you to know that not everybody's made the change, only 30% have, and 30% are way behind, and the other 30% are somewhere in the middle, or 33 and a third, you know. So before we get too far into that, if you guys would get your um, cell phone out, and I'm going to ask you, and I know it's, this isn't always the easiest thing to do, to type in um, a domain name because I want you to see it for yourself firsthand on your smartphone. So the domain name is www.bridaleleganceTulsa.com. And I'll just give you a couple of minutes to uh, bring that up. Mary, why we're, this is Victor here, and thanks for letting me jump in. 
Um, why folks are, are typing in uh, www.bridalelegancetulsa.com, uh, I imagine that most people don't even know what what platform their website is even built on. Is it, is it HTML1 for the, probably not five? Um, and so how can they uh, readily check what that is? Should they just contact you at Mary? Uh, at your at your email or what would you recommend that they you're absolutely free to contact me but I would recommend you just pull it up on your cell phone because you're gonna see once you open this website on your cell phone okay and I'm gonna have you open another one that you can tell whether it's HTML5 or not the results are dramatic okay so um, and what you can see, and I don't know if you can, they can't see me pointing to this little, <clears throat> can you see my pointer on the screen? Yeah, we can. We can see your curve. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So what you can see is, is that the page has rearranged itself when, um, when you bring it up on a different device. It will also rearrange itself, example, on a tablet or a, a smartphone when you tip it. And it does that based on how it's programmed and based on the fact that HTML5 allows that to happen. One of the things, one of the primary things that HTML5 uh, helped companies with was the ability to stream videos. Um, YouTube had adopted a technology that used Flash for all of their videos and none of them would show on cell phone, anything in the Safari um, which is the Apple line of products. So let's, <clears throat> I have another website in case you don't know one that's not mobile or responsive. It's one of our clients. Uh, she has some health issues and she's made a, I shouldn't probably say that, some choices to not um, go mobile responsive right now. And so her website is mtwevents.com. And you can bring that up on your cell phone, and it'll look much like this little um, square. I took a screenshot of this to put it on here. This little um, simulation of what it looks like on a mobile device here. So what you can see is it's impossible to use the menu. You can't read anything. The words are all shrunk down. You can still expand it, you know, if you use your fingers to squish it in and out. If you can do that, it's not mobile responsive. That, yeah, that's a good, able? that's a good simple test without even having to bother with HTML uh, platform they're on. So exactly. Thanks, Mary. No problem. So um, you know we help people with that all the time. Then there's other questions because business decisions are about return on investment. At the end of the day, if it's if there's no benefit to me as a company, then why would I do it? So the first thing you have to look at, or we recommend you look at, is will adopting this technology save me money? And the answer is yes. Um, it saves you money in development of content. It saves you money in the fact that you only have to manage one set of content. In the past, in order to have a mobile responsive site, people would build an individual mobile platform. You know those things that you go to the Google Play Store and the Apple Store to download on your phone? They would pay lots of money to have those done. And they would have to manage the content on their website as well as their mobile app. There was another technology that would create a website that was specifically designed for running on a specific phone platform. And so what people found is that they were having to manage content in all these multiple platforms. With mobile responsive, you can have one site. We say one site, many devices. You'll probably hear that throughout. It's coming through the industry. One site, many devices. So one set of content, only one SEO campaign. You're not going to be creating multiple campaigns for multiple devices. And, and I think the most important one is the lowering your bounce rate. Does everybody know what lowering your bounce rate means? You're getting, okay. 
So go ahead. Yeah. And tell. One, okay. Well, one of the things that um, obviously we want to see if your website's performing, and we have a tool called Google Analytics that tells you how many people bounce, and they calculate that based on. Um, if somebody's on your website less than a certain, it's actually in seconds, right? So you may be getting a lot of traffic, but you're going to get, if you get a, I mean, 80% bounce rate, you need to factor your traffic down. Well, what we see with mobile responsive sites is there are lower bounce rates. So let's imagine 50% of the people going to your website are using a mobile device and they get there and they're having to use their fingers to squish it around and roll around and they can't read it and they can't manage the menu. They're going to leave and they're going to go find a website that um, they're going to be able to function with. So that's that's the real state of where we are with mobile responsive right now. 61% of the users go back to Google to find a site that's easier to read. So Mary, um, it's it's not just a matter of saving money because what's hard to calculate is the lost business um, that you that you incur with not uh, having a mobile compliant. So that's really difficult to calculate. Although your bounce rates sort of hint at that, um, but then also it's saving money, is it not? Because of the reduced cost of redevelopment. In the past, a web programmer needs to test a website on Chrome and Firefox and Explorer and Safari and then make accommodations for all of those. So your development cost is is high because of those multiple browser tests. Is that correct? Correct. correct. And so what this does, remember it, it's uh, non-proprietary, is it takes the technology out of the browser. What the browsers had done Google and Chrome and Firefox was start all of this browser programming that opened up this these functionalities that were not native to HTML. So HTML5 said, you know, we're going to we're going to make these things native to HTML5 and it's no longer going to be controlled by the browsers. So it does reduce the cost of development because you're not always making trade-offs between this technology and that technology and and what it costs to implement it. But I want to kind of go back to that lower bounce rates. If somebody bounces, you've lost that. What, whatever you think a lead on the internet is worth to your company, you've, lo you've lost that value. So it saves you money because it reduces your bounce rate. If you can take it from 60% uh, to 25%, then you've gained. And, th and those things are hard to put figures on. But you can say, sure. how much is a lead worth to me? I'm well, sure it, I can Go ahead, Victor. real quickly, a lead cost for one of my clients, a lead costs about a uh, dollar and 50 cents, the average in and out. The, the conversion ratio of that lead, I'm talking a well-qualified lead that's been nurtured. The conversion ratio of that lead is about, oh, 27%, so 27% of those qualified leads will convert to a sale. The average income from that sale is $5,300. It's real easy to start looking at how much lost money is a uh, company's losing by a lost meat, at least this one single client. So it's important to really be able to know your return on investment for all of your marketing efforts and understand what a lead value really is for your company. And it's different for everyone. And we have a lot of nonprofits and some on this. You can almost look at this as an emotional cost, but what's the lead of uh, of losing, uh, not being, what's the cost of not being able to help somebody who's in dire need? Uh, what's the, you know, um, that's incalculable really because we're talking a, a human component here. But, mm -hmm. but this really does matter. And, and thanks, Mary. I'll back out now. Oh, no, thank you for the insight. I really appreciate it. Um, that's the great thing about our group is that, you know, we each have our expertise. And for you to be able to just step in and provide that information to me is invaluable. So thank you. Uh, so 
of course, the next thing I think of is a business owner, and uh, I've been doing this, <laughs> I feel like I've been doing this for four generations, but I'm a fourth generation entrepreneur, and so I grew up listening to this, you know, this, these conversations, this is second nature to me, does it make me money? Uh, and so, again, if you have a higher ranking in Google, you're going to get more traffic if you're mobile responsive, you're going to get more traffic that stays, that doesn't bounce. And whatever your lead to um, conversion ratio is, you can calculate those, those items. Um, so I, I want to say in a future um, webinar, I would like to, you know, talk about how those conversions can be come stronger with some web technology, but we don't have time to cover that today. Uh, so back to does it make me money, again, 2015 is the mobile responsive tipping point. Again, more searches equals more sales, lower bounce rates. I've repeated this one because it fit in both places. <clears throat> um, Interesting statistics that are being noticed is that there's a higher response rate. 90% of mobile searches result in action. So you can do the math, and I don't know what these numbers are for you, but just, you know, find out from your Google Analytics what your traffic is. And look at your bounce rate. Do the math, and then recalculate your traffic based on reducing it by, let's say, 40%, because after you've gotten mobile responsive. Now take those and factor your conversion ratio up for 50% of your traffic, which is mobile responsive, and get an idea of how much more business you're going to get. Uh, the website we did for Bridal Elegance of Tulsa, she was one of our first clients that we took mobile responsive, and it she's actually doubled her revenue in one year and it is very significant. She's very excited about it. She's hired three people. It has been a great thing for her um, because because of several things we did, but the first one was to get her a higher response rate. Um, the other thing that you need to think about, I see people doing this all the time. They're going to have a website that I say is old school. It's probably HTML1. It probably hasn't been updated in the last three to five years and probably isn't really ranking for or for search engine optimization so they turn to advertising and they'll spend money on billboards and um, television commercials and all kinds of things M magazine ads all kinds of things and People will go to their website and they it just won't speak to them. So 66% of users perform a mobile search after seeing an ad. So that's a pretty high, which contributes to the 90% of them taking action. So these are things that you have to think about is, yes, it will increase your conversions. Yes, it will make you money. Those are very simple. Do you have any questions? Uh, no questions at the moment, but uh, we certainly encourage our audience to submit questions via chat or the questions feature. Thanks, Mary. Yeah, please do that. Um, I've been doing this for a little over, it's going on 20 years. I, sometimes I kind of grimace when I think how long I've been doing this. I have a wealth of expertise, so if you have any questions at all, um, feel free to bring them forward. I'd be happy to help you. So here's the other interesting thing is the same group of Fortune 500 companies that we looked at earlier are broken down by the revenue that they generate in this chart. And I've tagged it here, this little mouse. This is $4.2 trillion in sales for this 34% of the Fortune 500 company that have HTML5. The 28.9 percent, that's like 34 and 28.9. This is their share of the sales. I'm sorry. 
not their percentage of HTML. This is their share of the sales. So those companies, even though they had a slightly smaller uh, percentage of total implementation, um, actually are having a higher earnings than the companies that are obviously using um, HTML1. So we'll see, because of these numbers, we'll see those Fortune 500 companies move. Uh, I don't want to say in mass because it's not a something that you should undertake lightly. It's something you should give a lot of thought to. Um, the bigger your company is, the more you have to in, the more you have to really look at how you want to implement this technology. There's a lot of exciting things that can be done. Um, so, so far I've just talked about marketing and I want to make sure you understand that marketing is not the only thing that HTML5 can do for you. This technology has given us the ability to display information and move through it in interesting sorts of ways. So you can actually do things to help your staff be more efficient, you know, by giving, making sure they have access to information. The same for your customers. Uh, again, back to your staff, we, we can talk about sales conversions and fulfillment and more efficient work processes, which Cynthia is an expert at, and uh, she can certainly help people uh, identify those work processes and um, if you can identify it, we can code it. That's what I can tell you. So one of the things, I'll, I'll talk about a few of the things we've done. Um, as far as providing information to staff or business owners, uh, we actually capture those leads from the website and put them into um, some pages that the customer can look at and use it to respond, right? So that gives them a quick response to the customer. One of the things that we're doing right now for a company who has salespeople out around the town scheduling installations. And so what he wants is for his salespeople to be able to pull up the calendar um, of the where, where the installers are all set up and find an opening for his customer so that he can book that install right there while he's with the customer. And um, that'll save them a lot of time if they get a cancellation. They can fill it quickly. They can keep their installers on track. Um, salespeople, of course, um, are always wanting to, you want your salespeople to have the most recent information. If your website is not your primary brochure and you have printed information, while they're sitting with the customer, they can pull that document up and push it into an email, and it'll be on the customer's desktop right as soon as they're talk about it. So the loyalty that you gain from your customer from doing that shows that you're proactive, you're meeting their needs, you're going to be there for them, there's credibility. So there's all kinds of things besides does it make me money or save me money that are getting added to the value you bring as a company. One of the things that we did uh, for a manufacturing company is um, and I don't know how many of you have ever done manufacturing, but I did it for 15 years and I love it. So I immediately saw this woman who has this manufacturing company's need to um, put orders together and kit parts. So, you know, put everything together and get it shipped. So her mobile responsive site, the administration portion of it, lets her take a tablet or whoever's doing the fulfillment take a tablet out into the warehouse, pull up the order, which has the list of everything that needs to go in it, and um, move it out of inventory while she's filling the order, get the parts together. So it helps her keep her inventory on track. It makes their job easier. Inventory is one of the biggest problems in manufacturing. So that was a lot of fun, um, helping them get that set up and working. So there's, you know, there's a lot of different um, things, but I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about it. Uh, Mary, I've got a quick question, if I may. Sure. It, it relates back to the statistics of Fortune 500 companies, and mm -hmm. the question is, does this translate to small businesses as well as Fortune 500 companies? 
I would say yes. I imagine it does, but I imagine it's worse for small businesses because they 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 don't have the resources of a Fortune 500. Is that a reasonable assumption? Well, worse in what sense? Well, worse that they're that a smaller business is behind the development trail um, in terms of which HTML platform they're on. Correct, I agree. Mm -hmm. And I have searched high and low to try to find some statistics on small and medium business adoption of HTML5, not with great success. We started this year calling all of our customers and saying, here's what we have, here's what we think it'll do for you, do you want to do this? And um, no, not all of them wanted to do it. So, well, if I may, the... the uh that's not always bad news. In fact, I think it can be good news for a small business because with adoption to HTML5, you can play the role of David versus Goliath. And if you can, as your, if you can slip down to your marketing slide again, just to wrap up, um, this, this slide here will really pay off for a David versus Goliath. If you can really have an integrated customer dialogue and interaction from your website into the business intelligence of your company, you can respond better to customers than even Fortune 500 firms. And what that means is when somebody comes into your web, you know, at first contact, the first site visit, and you start tracking what pages they go to, if they go to a sales and pricing page, how much time they spent there, what content they download, the customer effect doesn't have to tell you anything. Their activity tells you what their interests are and what buying cycle they're in. And if, exactly. you, and if you can communicate to that customer or uh, uh, constituent or whomever uh, your, your organization serves, then you can have relevant conversations with them and pick it up right where they left off because they may be interacting on the website once, email next, social media next. And they, they're aware of all their interactions with you. If you're aware of all those, you can have a seamless conversation with them through any communication channel that they choose not you and that's exactly. how, that's how you can be a David and take on the Goliath so let the fortune 500 trail you get out there and uh, and be responsive and beat them at their own game that's what I say I agree with you and I um, that's one of the things I love about small businesses is that they have the ability to I call zig and zag where big companies it just it's a behemoth and it's kind of hard to turn the ship so smaller companies are able to respond and gain market share because of it. And we all believe it's you know that the people who are the early adopters of mobile responsive HTML5 um, will gain an edge in the market that ahead of their competitors that the competitors won't be able to cover ground on. So it's it's really important in my opinion that. Um, you act now to some there. I led right into that. Act now to stay ahead of your competition. So, some things that you want to think about is define a goal to achieve using HTML5. Is that goal um, increase leads, increase conversions, uh, make my sales staff more nimble? You define those goals. You know what would really help your company the most. Create a budget to achieve it. And so a lot of times as a small business we're just like I don't care it's the cheapest one that uh, I can find and that is not always your best solution. A lot In my industry um, there's a lot of kids and college and so on and so forth that'll oh I'll do that or my nephew will do that website for your you know and so we go <laughs> these people, I say we, people go to these other sources to save money, but they've really cost themselves in the long run because they've lost business, like Victor was saying. Um, there's a value to that. So not all websites are created equal. Uh, definitely budget for it and budget for a professional, someone who has experience and expertise in, in uh, achieving these things so that you can achieve them. You know if they've done it for other people that they can do it for you as well. This might engage with um, experienced implementers and then monitor and track your goals. 
Google Analytics is not the only uh, software that will give you metrics on what's going on. Uh, Victor works with a product that we use for um, monitoring people's engagement when they're ready to move forward. So people move through your lead funnel, your sales funnel at different um, positions. And so you can monitor and track those with multiple tools so that you know that you've achieved your goals. If you haven't, you might need to tweak something and say, well, this is working, but we really need it to increase by 10%. How can we make this be more effective? So that's all part of how you manage your website. I've kind of you know, gotten over into some of the other topics that I want to cover as we go through this year, but HTML5 is very important to your company um, in getting new customers and improving work processes and creating customer loyalty. So I hope you choose to embrace that. That's good, uh, Lily. So yeah. I, have, I have one last question that we'll uh, we'll introduce your. You can leave your contact information there. That's okay. fine. Okay. That's all good, and we do encourage you to reach out to Mary. And and just so you know, all of the executive volunteers with Business Performance USA uh, really believe in giving first. Um, that's that's our motto. It's what we believe in. So we're truly here to help. And if you have questions, ask Mary. Um, ask all of us. But we do have one question in regards to WordPress, and we hear a lot about WordPress and how it relates to your topic today. But is it, it – correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'd like to test myself. Um, HTML5 or HTML4 and, and on and on is the architecture, and WordPress is the publishing platform which talks to your HTML5 and tells it what to change and what to publish. So they're really two separate things. Is, am I correct in that? Well, WordPress implementations, because the market is so strong for HTML5, what these um, applications have been doing is coming up with a mobile responsive solution. And some are more elegant than others. There are many, many what we call plugins for WordPress. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to redo my sons. I'm embarrassed to admit he hired someone. He lives in Phoenix, and he has his own. He has a very uh, strong fifth generation, as he is, entrepreneur uh, business in Phoenix, and he hired somebody locally to make his website mobile responsive. And when he sent it to me, I went, oh, honey, that's just wrong, you know. So, so plugins. In other words, so these Eight, these WordPress press plugins are really kind of a, a patchwork solution. They're not really down to the core. Is that accurate? Exactly. So when, when what we do and what we've always done is we, you know, we're a custom programming house. We're very affordable. Is that we program in HTML5 directly using the .NET platform. So we're not just saying, well, let's put this wrapper around these websites. And um, for very little money, I just stick a wrapper around it and say you're mobile responsive. And then what what do you recommend for a publishing platform, content management system? You know, um, so we have a content management system that we've designed in the 20 years that we've been doing this work for customers that's very easy and efficient to use. It provides the content management functionality, which feeds the database, which feeds the web page. All of the program is, is custom and designed to implement the client's needs. So obviously we recommend that. We do help people from time to time with WordPress, um, Joomla, similar problems. What we're seeing is, well, that's a whole nother conversation. I don't even want to go down that road. <laughs> what we're seeing is, is those technologies, like every other technology that I've seen besides Microsoft, goes by the wayside eventually. So our shop has long been a Microsoft shop. We've you know, implemented technologies that they've made available to us. Uh, and we've found that that has created a long-term continuity for our clients. Excellent. Mary, I've got one last question here, and then we uh, will need to close this out. But uh, I, I should ask this question myself, but it comes from the audience. It, this may be difficult to answer, but what does it cost to uh, to mobilize a website? And 
does it require a complete overhaul? I, I imagine, do you have a ballpark figure at least? Right. If you have what we call a brochure site, five or six pages, mm -hmm. we have a very affordable fee, uh, fee for that. Um, so let's say twelve hundred dollars, and we'll take your existing website and completely mobilize it in HTML5 and have that up and running. We won't change your pictures, we won't change your logo, we won't change your template. When you start talking about a redesign, you know, it's adding quite a few hours. So that's another conversation. In general, the more pages you have, obviously, the more your cost is going to go up. Right. So this is, we'll keep it in context of just a pure conversion to mobile friendly site, not affecting mm -hmm. content, not changing page count. Correct. So starting at 1200. Okay. I mean, yeah. I may need to call you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so Mary, let's, let's jump to uh, the last slide and why we get there. Um, if I may, Mary, I'll, I'll do a little housekeeping here. Um, okay. But two things. Do we have any last questions, comments from the audience? If so, this is a great time. And Mary, do you have any closing comments and wisdom you'd like to share? Um, you know, I almost hate to say this, but if, if you're in business to make money and you want to either grow your business or at least stay where you're at, you need to go mobile responsive. If you don't do anything else for your website, just convert it to mobile responsive. Okay. I, clearly, if, uh, if you're in business and B to B to C, I believe it's it's just obvious that this needs to be done. But the B to Bers, which is really more of me, business to business, it's it's mm -hmm. becoming really really critical because the sales cycle begins and can carry deep into the decision cycle on the internet um, before a salesperson even has the the chance to engage. So it's really become critical for B to B environments as well. And hypercritical if you expect to have business with anybody under the age of 45. Yeah, that would yeah. be me. But because true. they're not using their computers anymore, they're using their cell phones to do business. Right. Exactly. It's amazing. So on that, we'll we'll close out. You can see the information here. Um, again, we do ask you to contact in, uh, contact us anytime. Victor at businessperformanceusa.org, and. Uh, I will route the question to whomever, uh, whatever expert is applicable for your question. And you can always, of course, become a member. It's free. Go to our website, businessperformanceusa.org. You'll see the blue button with the B. That's our worker B. Click on that, and it's easy to register, easy to become a member, and it's always perfectly complimentary. So we thank you for your time. We're appreciated that our four-legged friends are, uh, are applauding us as well. And so thank you for all that. And Mary, uh, you're a dear. It's always good to work with you. And thanks for your wisdom. And thank you, Victor. Of course. We'll be closing it out, folks. So thanks for your time. And contact us. Ask us questions. Challenge us. Let us earn your trust. Thanks, everyone.